الله الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته حبيبكم إياكم الله مساكم بالخيرات والمسرات والبركات والتعلم والتعليم آمين حبيبي is just welcoming everybody with beautiful um, a beautiful welcome um, mixed with du'as and just in short saying he's happy that everybody has come to benefit and to, to learn فإن أعظم ما يقضيه الإنسان هو التعلم والتعليم وبيان حقيقة السير إلى الله because from amongst the greatest deeds that a person may engage in is to is learning and uh, studying and teaching and more so that which is related to spiritual wayfaring وهي من أعظم الساعات التي يعدها الإنسان ذخرا للوقوف بين يدي الله and these are the most valuable hours that we invest before that great meeting on judgment day قال الحبيب علي حبشي في قصيدته مضى في العلم والتقوى زماني الا لله لتلك المدامه المدامه يعني الشيء الشراب الطيب الحلو and one of the great imams, Imam Ali al-Habshi, mentioned in his qasida the importance of this which we are doing, studying, um, learning, and spiritual wayfaring in terms of using one's time in that which is um, most valuable to him. وَلِهَذَا قَالَ الْإِمَامُ الشَّافِعِي رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَنُهُ طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ أَفْضَلْ مِنْ نَوَافِلَ الْعِبَادَةِ and this is why Imam Shafi rahimahullah mentioned that seeking knowledge is better than engaging in superrogatory acts of worship. And the greatest of such knowledge is knowledge of spiritual wayfaring. And this is why we have given such importance and our teachers have given such um, emphasis on this science. And just to recap what we spoke about previously in yesterday's lesson, the following two topics, spiritual, many topics such as spiritual wayfaring and tariqah, the spiritual paths. And and before we begin this session, we would just like to thank everybody um, who facilitated this session to take place and for Allah to place blessings therein. وَإِنْشَاءَ تَكُونْ هَذِهِ الدَّوْرَةَ هِيَ مفتاح لدورات ودروس ومجالس أخرى. And it is our hope that this is the first but not the last of sessions that we'll be having. Lessons in future we're hoping to have which pertain likewise to spiritual wayfaring and seeking knowledge from those people who have a firm sound chain of transmission. And that through these lessons it be a means of us establishing a connection amongst each other, a spiritual connection. Of which End result is, which we hope is, as we met and united on such platforms that we meet on that black blessed platform on Judgment Day at the fountain of 
the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إذا قويت هذه العلائق والارتباطات التي بيننا وبينكم ارتقت أرواحنا وتآلفت. And if these connections that we have between us, if we nurture them and they strengthen, likewise will our spiritual states elevate and be together. قال حبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث الصحيح الأرواح جنود مجندة. The Prophet وسلم, alluded to this meaning in, uh, in, in a hadith regarding the souls and their connection. To the closest meaning that those souls who connect will likewise continue to connect and those souls who initially didn't connect will likewise continue not to connect. وقد ذكر الإمام الغزالي رحمه الله تعالى أن من الأسباب التي يعرف الإنسان بها عيوب نفسه فيتطهر ويتزكى ثلاثة أسباب. And Imam Ghazali رحمه الله mentioned that there are three reasons for a person to find out about his flaws. الأول الشيخ المربي. Three means, rather. The first is the Sheikh Al Murabi, the the spiritual rarer. الثاني الأخ الصادق الناصح. The second means to find out one's mistakes or flaws is to have a sincere companion who gives you advice, who shares advice with you. الثالث ما يجريه الحق سبحانه وتعالى على أرسينة الحساد والأعداء من ذكر عيوبك. And the third, that which manifests upon the tongue of the jealous and the envious in at attacking you as to what you have, um, your flaws or your mistakes. ونحن إن شاء الله تعالى نأمل أن نكون من الإخوان في الله المتحابين في الله المتاج المتجالسين من أجل الله. And we hope then to fall into the second category of those who met upon sincerity advising each other for the sake of Allah. And upon this then we will be on the path or the way of seeking knowledge in its appropriate way. وعلى بساط الصفاء والمحبة. And upon a platform, upon a state of love and tranquility. الأخلاء بعضهم الأخلاء يومئذ بعضهم لبعض عدو إلا المتقين كما قال الله. As it's been mentioned in the Quran, to the closest meaning that people or brothers will be enemies to each other except those that had god taqwa within them and on that day that we will remove from them any um, ill feelings towards their, their, their fellow brothers and they will be upon um, beds or they'll be upon platforms facing and through us then having such um, platforms we are opening our hearts to each other and through us then taking this approach, we will be as one body. Regardless of the physical distance. Because spirits or souls don't know distance. Because the spirit or the soul is not from um, things attached to this world, but from celestial things. Yes, 
على ظاهره على ظاهره and then he mentioned regarding this affair then of the soul or the spirit um, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that and they ask you about the affair of the soul say to them that this affair is its knowledge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the closest meaning and the soul or spirit if you like is stronger than time and place It's only that it is caged or it is it is within or found within this body. And what makes a person um, a person is not his um, body but rather his soul. So, المنهج الواحد والطريقة والمقصد قوى بعضها بعض. And if the souls then meet upon a common طريقة and a common um, uh, objective, then أيش النتيجة؟ يتقوى بعضها ببعض. Through this, they then um, mutual strengthening takes place. And which gives then rise to feelings and um, attachment. And at and at this particular juncture, then the soul now is attributed, or it, it, it's 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 as if it's part of not the worldly life but cel celestial realm. لهذا قال الإمام الحداد رحمه الله. إمام الحداد رحمه الله mentioned. وأرواح تطير إلى علاها لأجنحة الغرام المقعدية. Elevate to um, ila. وأرواح تطير إلى علاها ال ال العلا. Souls that elevate. بأجنحة الغرام المقعدية الغرام يعني المحبة. And the means of elevation of the wings of love. فتسرح في رياض من جنان أي تذهب إلى رياض والجن والجنة. And their destination or their end point is paradise. And if we've understood it correctly, they then return to their respective bodies, these souls. And for this reason, we see that the soul travels um, in while we are sleeping. Um, through the things that we see in terms of where the soul might find itself or at a particular place it might be. And this is nothing but from among the secrets of the soul. And it is our hope that Although we are physically apart, that we are united in terms of spirit and soul and heart. And for this reason, I request you to give me your hearts and to give me your souls.
وأعطيكم قلبي وروحي. In order for me in exchange to give you my heart and my soul. برابطي التلقي والأخذ والأخوة والمحبة. And let the link between us be love, brotherhood, and uh, mutual benefiting. متصل هذا بشيوخنا الذين أخذنا وتلقينا عنهم. This is all connected to our teachers as well, who we um, sought knowledge from. وهكذا شيخ عن شيخ إلى سيد الوجود صلى الله عليه وسلم. And such is our tradition that we took from our teachers who took from their teachers who took from the greatest of teachers, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. والحق ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم روحه وقلبه مع الله. أعد هذه الإبارة سيدي. ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم قلبه وروحه مع الله. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's soul and heart is with his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. وما رميت إذ رميت ولكن الله رمى. As it mentions in the ayah that you did not throw when you threw rather وما رميت أعيد وما رميت إذ رميت ولكن الله رمى. You did not throw when during that time that you threw however it was Allah that um, did the throwing or, or should be understood in its context of, of the verse of the Quran إن الذين يبايعونك إنما يبايعون الله and it further says that verily those people who um, those individuals who give allegiance to you in reality they are giving allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فهل تجدون هذا الانشراح الذي في قلوبكم so what then are your feelings, your inner feelings at this point in time? Is there any sense of tranquility that is descending upon your hearts? In order for us just for a moment to leave this physical realm. على المكون سبحانه وتعالى. In order to witness the reality of the affair or of this which has been created for nothing but to guide or as a signpost towards Allah سبحانه وتعالى. ولا يكون أن تنظر إلى حقائق الأمور إلا بالبصيرة. And this is not possible for you to see the reality of matters except through basira, spiritual or insight. And just like you are able to see physical, the material things around you using your eyes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alluded to this meaning saying that um, to the closest meaning that it is not the, the what they see it's not with their eyes rather with their hearts if an individual becomes blind he if he if a sickness befalls him and he becomes blind he will approach um the the doctors regarding okay. the eye الذي عنده عما في القلب والبصيرة أين يذهب؟ So who then is who then should the one that has a blind heart go to؟ يذهب عند أطباء القلوب. No doubt that such individuals should likewise go to the doctors of the spiritual eyes. وهؤلاء هم شيوخ التربية. And this is what we call the sheikhs of spiritual nurturing. The ones who are the heirs of the prophetic secrets. Those who gaze upon people with mercy.
And whoever is fortunate enough to have their gaze land upon them, their hearts are awakened spiritually. And this is why and this is why we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a particular poem that asking him to gaze upon us and the result of this gaze if we are to attain it it will be nothing but medication for our spiritual diseases and what is understood through this poetry line of Allah gazing with his merciful gaze upon, uh, upon the, 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 the creation is that he subhanahu wa ta'ala has his um, il, um, sal, uh, group of people that he, he uses as a means to gaze upon the the other people فهم ينظرون بنور الله عز وجل so we previously said that they gaze upon other people but their gaze in reality is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gaze of light لهذا قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اتقوا في فاسة المؤمن فإنه ينظر بنور الله and this is why the Prophet وسلم, alluding to this meaning which we are speaking about that fear the insight or fear the, 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 the judgment of a believer because verily he sees or perceives things with the light of Allah. وَجَاءَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ الصَّحِيحِ وهو, uh, حتى أحب حديث المحبة فإذا أحببته كنت سمعه الذي يسمع به وبصره الذي يبصر به إلى آخر الحديث فهو يبصر بالله ويسمع بالله And we further have heard this meaning in the hadith al-Qudsi that speaks about and Habib just mentioned the end of the hadith that it reaches a stage where my love for the servant is such that he sees with my with my sight and he hears with my hearing and another of the great people of the past mentioned that and if somebody was to receive a gaze from the people of Allah, the result of this gaze upon this individual will be that his spiritual state will become awakened. And the story is narrated of one of the Gnostics who went on Hajj. ودخل مسجد الخيف بمنى. After entering Masjid al-Khayf at Mina. وكان معه أحد مريديه. In طلابه. his company. The big city. طلابه أحد طلابه. And in his company was his disciples with him. فرأه يمشي في المسجد ويتنقل من مكان إلى مكان. من رآه سيدي الناس طالب رأى هذا الشيء شيخه في مسجد منا في الخيف يتنقل من مكان إلى مكان كأنه يبحث عن شيء ما. So the disciples or the murids noticed their teacher, their sheikh, when he was in the mosque, moving from one place to another as if he is searching for something. فقال له إن لله عبادا إذا نظروا إلى أحد so he responded then to their curiosity by saying that verily with Allah there is 
a people who, if their gaze lands upon you, you will not only receive felicity in this life, but also in the hereafter. لأن مسجد الخير بمنا مجمع الأرواح والأولياء. As it is known that Masjid al khayf in Mina is the, the point, the meeting place for the souls of the awliya. Which is why many of the uh, awliya and many of the souls of the awliya gather at this masjid khayf in mina ولهذا قال الامام الحداد ولن الخيف ولن المعلى وخيف منا ولن المعلى وخيف منا and this is why imam al haddad mentioned in one of his qasidas after mentioning the the, the cemetery of ma'la he mentioned khayf الله ينظر لنا وليكم في هذه الدورة. And we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to gaze upon us in this session. ويجعل كل واحد من الحاضرين منظور. And that all of those in attendance receive a portion from this divine gaze. وإذا حصلت هذه النظرة يبدأ التغير. A gaze that if attained or lands on an individual, change starts to take place. والترقي. As well as elevation. والقلب حينئذ يكون قلبا منور حي. And this individual's heart then, after being in a state of, after being in a state of um, a dead state, comes to life and illuminated. And it is a custom of many of our scholars and um, the pious people that they, when they attend gatherings, they intend to enter or to take part in this gathering with the intention that they receive this divine gaze. And the highest of gazes that an individual can receive into, from human beings is the best of human beings, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قال الله عز وجل ولا تعد عيناك عنهم. And Allah سبحانه وتعالى mentions in the Quran ما التفسير لهذه الآية؟ يعني لا تبتعد ولا عينك عن هؤلاء القوم أمره الله سبحانه وتعالى أن ينظر إليهم وأن يبقى معهم ولا يبتعد عن. بسورة الكهف. And the Allah سبحانه وتعالى mentions um, Habib is alluding to this that we spoke about about the gaze of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Kaf um, to the closest meaning not a direct translation of course that do not turn your gaze from them and and he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his sight is nothing but the, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he is under his divine care, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi haqq al-nabiy al-mustafa fa'innaka bi'ayunina. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has alluded to many places in the Qur'an where he speaks, where he mentions about this divine special care which the Prophet وسلم, is specifically under. And through these ayahs then that speak about this gaze or this care, we understand that there is a relationship here then between the Prophet وسلم's gaze upon us and that gaze from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him. 
And it has been mentioned in the Sahih Muslim. يغزو في آم من الناس يعني مجموعة من الناس يغزو في آم من الناس واصل سيدي فيبطى عليهم الفتح so the um to 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 the closest translation is that uh, a group of individuals go out to battle and they find that um, the the opening their opening or victory is delayed فيقولون هل فيكم من راى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم so in this um, um, situation that they found themselves of this delay in opening or delay in victory they started asking amongst themselves is there any of is there any of you that who ha who has seen the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم يغزو فئام من الناس فيتاخر عليهم الفتح and then an afwan sayri nafsul yaghzu marra thani yani majmu'a ukhra tati yaghzun fa yataakhar alayhum al fath and likewise a second group in a similar situation um experiences a delay in the opening or in the victory fa yaqulun hal fikum man ra'a man ra'a rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam rasulullah sallallahu alayhi and likewise, they turned to each other and inquired if there was anybody who saw someone who saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then once this individual is identified, they then put him forward and the victory or the opening takes place. And let us understand then that this gaze which is being mentioned in this hadith is nothing but that which has been passed on from generation to generation along uh, upon this chain of transmission. From that time until the very time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect everybody, this gaze will continue to be passed on through this transmission, chain of transmission. So we will allude then, or rather we will discuss in today's lesson to that pertaining to the gaze which is nothing but the sheikh and the different types of shuyukh. So let us bring to mind and presence then this chain. And through that, let us also request that we are able to receive the gaze. فنقول بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نبدا. So let us all say then in the name of Allah, let us begin. سيكون الحديث عن الشيخ. So today's topic will be about the sheikh. نعرض ال تعرض ال نعم تعرض الشرائح نعم يمكن طيب تفضل واضح امامكم سيدي نعم واضح لدى الاخوان um, can everybody see the slides clearly Or rather if anybody can't see them clearly let us know نعم نعم نشكر من قام بهذه الترجمة وأعد هذا الإعداد الأستاذ يسرى وكل من ساهم وزوجة الشيخ عبد الله ونسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يعطيهم من هذا النظر الذي ينظر به إلى أهل التعرض والخدمة. آمين. And we will just summarize um, the words of praise from Habib Ahmed um, and he just 
thanked those individuals who were responsible um, for this translation, um, uh, Sister Yusra, and anybody who supported her um, together with the admin. فالحديث عن الشيخ فلا بد أن نعرف معاني الشيخ. So since today's discussion is about the Sheikh, it's befitting upon us to first know the definition of a Sheikh. فالشيخ في اللغة العربية من تجاوز حد الشباب. So linguistically then, as it appears in front of you, um, a Sheikh is an elderly man who is no longer in his youth. و... ولهذا عندنا الشباب والشيوخ. And then through this definition we understand then that there's obviously a difference between somebody who's elderly and somebody who's in his youth. والشيخ يأتي كذلك عند أهل العلم. And it's also used in other contexts, the word sheikh. و... الذي المقدم والمقتدى به وإن كان صغيرا. Such as an individual who is emulated and who is um, followed or and who is um, uh, he, he is brought forward um, to to gatherings regardless of his age. He is known as also a sheikh. لهذا يقال الشيخ فلان والشيخ فلان أي في العلم. And this is why we have then um, scholars who are referred to Sheikh so and so, Sheikh so and so, on account of their knowledge. As for the definition of the Sheikh, um, as far as the people of um, spiritual wayfaring is concerned, هو الذي يحيي الروح ويميت النفس ويقتدى به. He is the one who revives, as the definition says there, he's the one who revives the souls, kills the ego, and is somebody who people can take as an example. فهذا هو الشيخ. So in short, this is the technical term as far as spiritual wafering is concerned as to what it means to be a sheikh. آخر, and it's all the sheikh is also المصطلح الاخر لكلمة شيخ. يعني يعبر بهذا المعنى عند اهل التربية بالوارث المحمدي. كلمة الشيخ. كلمة الشيخ عند أهل التربية يقال كذلك وارث محمدي. So the Sheikh, as we've understood in the spiritual um, wayfaring um, context, as the title um, appears there, likewise he is also known as a prophetic hair. وهو الذي يكون على قدم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأشرقت فيه أنواره. And it's an individual who strictly follows the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and within him the prophetic lights have exploded. And this is the very individual or this is the very type of individual which who we are referring to who the spiritual disciple or the murid, as it's known, attaches or connects to. Marhaba. Uh, the adhan for Maghrib has gone. So um, Habib Ahmed will just take a, a, a small break and inshallah, he will be back soon. Al-Kalam sayakun muhim wa mufid jiddan inshallah ta'ala وتتبين لكم معانم الارتباط بالشيخ والانتفاع به. We just want everybody's um, focus and attention as we're going to be discussing very important topics that related to connecting to a sheikh. نصلي إن شاء الله ونعود إليكم.
Marhaba. Habib Ahmed has just said that he will just um, pray his Maghrib and thereafter, inshallah, continue the lesson. Uh, inshallah, we will uh, resume hopefully in um, about 15 minutes, inshallah. Um, and Bilahi Tawfiq. Um, just to add, if anybody does have questions, and um, for those who didn't attend yesterday, uh, feel free to send the questions um, to the number that the admin will be posting. And then um, because of um, the time, we will arrange a separate lesson with Habib Ahmed, where he will then um, attend to these questions, inshallah ta'ala. Um, I hope that's in order and um, apologies for any inconvenience um, on our side, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. See you all soon in a few minutes.
Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, inshallah, we should be starting in a few minutes. And um, there was just one request that Habib did have um, in uh, before we began the sessions was um, if everybody could just maybe just post um, to the number to the number that admins going to post um, they, where, the countries that they are from, inshallah. Um, Habib just requested um, that. And um, inshallah, uh, at the end of the session, we will be sharing um, the PowerPoint presentation. And as um, we've already mentioned, as well as the recording, inshallah, which should be ready um, uh, soon, uh, not directly after the lesson, but maybe um, a few um, a few days or um, one or two weeks, inshallah ta'ala. Um, so if everybody could just um, forward us um, their countries, um, where they're from, at um, the number that, inshallah, the admin will post, inshallah. And um, Habib should be arriving shortly, inshallah. Um, I noticed that more people have joined. Alhamdulillah, welcome. And um, just a reminder to everybody that do feel free to ask your questions and um, they will be answered inshallah in a separate session, which um, Habib is um, going to arrange for us inshallah ta'ala. Uh, the number is now being posted there. So um, just before maybe Habib comes, everybody could just post the countries and Habib has arrived. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. ما شاء الله تبارك الله لا قوة إلا بالله جمعنا الله وياكم على الخير وتقبل منا ومنكم الأعمال الصالحة. الحمد لله حبيب is just expressing his joy for us um, being able to gather again and that ask and ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى together with other things that he made do us for but one of those things was that we get his acceptance سبحانه وتعالى. قبل الفاصل uh, ذكرنا uh, من هو الشيخ. وذكرنا أن الشيخ في اللغة العربية والشيخ الذي من عند أهل العلم وكذلك الشيخ الذي هو عند أهل التربية والتسكية. So before the break we discussed um, we gave a definition about the sheikh in terms of um, language linguistically as well as um, in the context of spiritual wayfaring. وذكرنا أن بعضهم يعبر بالشيخ عند أهل التربية والتزكية الوارث المحمدي. And we also mentioned that in terms of um, spiritual wayfaring is concerned that the sheikh is also known as the prophetic heir. i.e. the one that inherited from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. الذي يسلم المريد نفسه إليه ليهذبه ويطهره ويبين له طريق الوصول إلى الله. And these are the very individuals which the murid or the disciple surrenders his um, way to them so that they can show him and assist him upon the spiritual path towards the proximity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ويربط قلبه بقلبه. On condition that this disciple connects his heart with the sheikh's heart. وهو الذي يقتدي به ويرجع إليه. And likewise, the sheikh is the role will be the role model for this individual. ولهذا قال سيدنا الإمام عبد العزيز الدباغ رحمه الله. And for this reason, um, the great Imam Abdul Aziz al Dabagh mentioned, كما نقل عنه تلميذه ابن المبارك في الإبريز. As, as his student ibn Mubarak took from him in Ibriz, أن الشيخ الذي يلقى إليه القياد ويرتبط به ويكون قدوة وأسوة هو. العارف بأحوال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. So the sheikh that should be, that one should connect to and that should surrender their inner feelings and their self to should be somebody who is well aware or who knows 
about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. الذي سقيت ذاته من نوره صلى الله عليه وسلم. Whose soul has been quenched with the light of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. حتى صار على قدم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. And the end result of such an individual was that he then started strictly following the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. وأمده الله تعالى بكمال الإيمان وصفاء العرفان. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise gave this shaykh then divine assistance and complete and firm faith. So this, these are the type of individuals then, as we've mentioned just now, that one should seek out or surrender one's spiritual affair to. And individuals who we should fill our hearts with their love. And an individual who you benefit through their company. And somebody who you derive benefit through being connected to them. وَلِأَنَّهُ يَجْمَعُكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ And this, all the benefit that takes place and all of these um, positive things that take place is because this individual is doing nothing but uniting you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَسَيَاتِ مَعْنَا إِن شَاءَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى مُفَصَّلًا لَمَّا نَتَكَلَّمْ عَنْ أَنْوَاعِ الشِّيُوخِ and we will then discuss this in more detail when we speak about the different types of sheikhs. ولهذا من الصلوات التي يحثنا عليها شيخنا الصلاة النورية. And from amongst the salutations that Habib Omar has encouraged us to do is that salawat which is known as الصلاة النورية. اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد نورك الساري ومددك الجاري واجمعني به في كل أطواري وعلى آله وصحبه يا نور. The salutation which speaks and mentions therein um, spiritual subtleties and inshallah we will um, present it later to everybody. ومن الصلوات كذلك الواردة عن الحبيب علي حبشي التي جعلها شيخنا الحبيب عمر في الحضرة البدرية كما تسمعونها. And likewise a salutation which was compiled by Habib Ali Habshi which we will also be presenting later which is read in the حضرة البدرية which takes place in um, Dar al Mustafa and some of the branches. اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد صلاة ترضيك وترضي. That, O oh Allah, send blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a blessing which would And um, this translation of this um, very subtle salutation, inshallah, we'll present it um, to everybody later. And إلى أي معنى سيدي خلاص نحن المعنى الذي يكون فيه الشيخ مستمدا من نور النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى قدمه ذكره عبد العزيز الدباب. And these do um, the, this meaning which um, Sheikh Abdul Aziz Dabbaq spoke about the definition that we spoke about a few minutes ago. Um, these two particular salawats, the one compiled by Habib Umar and the one compiled by Habib Ali uh, um, Al Habshi, which we will present later, are very important for spiritual wayfaring. Which is why that we should all ensure that we have our portion of this salutation. Especially um, Salat al Nuriya, which Habib Umar has compiled. Umar, 
And Habib Omar has encouraged that regarding this um, salawat, that we should, minimum we should do is 70, if not 100, if you find yourself engaged or, or busy, uh, occupied with seeking knowledge. However, the salutation should be done with love and desire. وقبل أن أبدأ في بيان أنواع الشيوخ وهو المحور المهم في هذا الكلام. And before then we begin with to discuss the different types of the the sheikhs. فهل لا بد من الشيخ؟ So a question then to everybody. هل الشيخ is there a need for individuals having a sheikh? وهل الإنسان إذا أراد أن يسلك سبيل الإرادة وأن يتحل يتخلى ويتحلى هل يستطيع أن يقوم ذلك بنفسه؟ And the, another question is that if an individual wanted to spiritually embark upon the path of seeking proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is it possible for them to do it without, or for them to do it by themselves? Al-Shaykh wa al-Irtibat bihi huwa naw'u min anwa' al-Suhba. Aid Sayyidi? Al-Shaykh wa al-Irtibat bihi naw'u min anwa' al-Suhba. So, an individual connecting to a sheikh, this is a type of companionship. It is known as a, a companionship. Regardless of whether they don't meet physically. As the companionship takes place, as long as there is the, the there is a spiritual connection, the souls connect. Companionship has great effects on the inward spiritual inward progress of an individual. And the person who you choose to keep company of will, whether you like it or not, affect you in some way, either positively or negatively. And not only outwardly, but also inwardly. And likewise, you will. كل هذا في الصحبة. هذا في الصحبة. And likewise, you will also follow what they are doing, whether it be good things or bad. ولهذا جاء الترغيب في مصاحبة الأخيار. And then, for this very reason, this is why we have been encouraged to keep the companionship. Of the pious. والتحذير من مصاحبة الأشرار. And we have been cautioned and warned to not keep the company of the evil doers. فإن من صاحب الأشرار والفساق وأهل الفساد فإنه ينحدر في أخلاقه ويظلم قلبه ويأخذ من طبائعهم. Because whoever chooses to keep the companionship of the evil doers will likewise be brought down to their level in terms of his traits and his outlook in life. ومن جالس الأخيار الأبرار يقوى إيمانه ويستقيم ويرتقي في مراتب الأخلاق الطيبة ويتنور قلبه وتسم روحه. And the opposite applies to those individuals who choose to keep the companionship of the pious 
they will find that within themselves and outwardly elevation and there will be an improvement in their state and their traits and so forth. The process of purification will take place and the process of abandoning the blameworthy traits will also take place by keeping the companionship of the pious. Which is why it is said that an individual, if you want to know somebody, look at his company that he keeps. لا عن المرء لا تسأل وسل عن قرينه إن القرين بالمقارن يقتدي. Beautiful poetry summarized, which means that don't ask somebody about themselves. Rather, look at who is around them, and through looking at who's around them, you will know at who you are looking at. ولو نظرنا إلى أصحاب الحبيب صلى الله عليه وسلم. So let us then take a look at the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. بما نال المرتبة العالية الشريفة وقوة الإيمان وصفاء القلب والمعارف واللطائف وما والأنوار التي عندهم كيف اكتسبوها؟ How then did they the, attain firm faith, i.e. the companions? And how did they attain how how were their states illuminated what was the um what was the reason for them being spiritually elevated they did not attain all of this except because of their companionship of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam بماذا حاز هذا الشرف العظيم؟ and the chain goes on to those who came after the companions, the tabi'un, the followers, as to the reason for them reaching where they reached and becoming the people who they became due to this companionship. وذلك بمجالستهم لأصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. And this was, as we previously mentioned, because of nothing but them keeping the company of the companions who kept the company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وأنوار النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وشريعته خالدة في الأمة جميعها. And the prophetic light of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is ever present in his nation will always be present the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallama after his demise there are those individuals who inherited from him sallallahu alayhi wasallama his hairs inherited from him who are known as um, prophetic um, hairs. وَرِثُوا الْعِلْمَ وَالتَّقْوَى وَالْمَعْرِفَةِ وَالنُّورِ Those individuals who inherited the prophetic light, they inherited taqwa, they inherited true knowledge. فكانوا خلفاءه عليه الصلاة والسلام في الهداية والإرشاد والتربية والتزكية. And after this inheritance took place, by default they became the representatives of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم as far as guidance was concerned, as far as spiritual rearing, purification, and so forth. وَلِهَذَا مَنْ يَرْتَبَطَ بِهِمْ وَاتَّصَلَ بِهِمْ اتَّصَلَ بِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. And this is an unbroken chain such that whoever connects then to these individuals connects to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. 
هؤلاء الذين يقولون إلى الناس علم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم العلماء في الظاهر ويقولون إلى الناس كذلك معاني التربية والتزكية والتطهير And these are nothing but the scholars who have taken from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and who then teach and pass on this knowledge which they inherited. أشار إلى ذلك في حديث مسلم عنه صلى الله عليه وسلم. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made mention of what we are discussing in the hadith narrated by Imam Muslim. لا تزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق لا يضرهم من خذلهم حتى يأتي أمر الله وهم كذلك. And to the closest meaning that they will continue to be a group of people that are upon truth who are not distracted or put off from those people who object to their way until the, the end of time. هؤلاء أي صحبتهم وسماع كلامهم والارتباط بهم الدواء والعلاج والشفاء. So if these individuals are found, then know that they are the place of, they are the walking hospitals in short. والبعد عنهم المرض والألم والسم القاتل. And the one who chooses to distance himself from these walking hospitals his end result is that he will only affect himself negatively and these certain group of people who are walking hospitals or walking or doctors spiritual doctors if you like are those individuals who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam alluded to or mentioned in a hadith that there are people who ever keeps their company will not be, his affair will not be wretched. And keeping companionship of the pious is a form of medication for the sick heart and a form of puri purification for the dirty soul. And through this companionship, one's traits and conduct is improved and their faith is made firmer. وهذه الأمور لا توجد في الكتب ولا في المؤلفات. And some of these subtleties which we are discussing, it may be that you don't find them written down in books. لأنها أمور قلبية وجدانية. Because they are nothing but very subtle matters which pertain to the heart. وكل إنسان لا يخلو من العيوب. All of us have mistakes, make mistakes, and we all have um, negative um, qualities within us. والأمراض القلبية. Such as diseases of the heart. وعلى الخفية لا يدركها بنفسه. And even more dangerous than that, sicknesses. Uh, diseases of the heart which we might not even be aware of ourselves. Such as very subtle showing off or very subtle arrogance and other subtleties which we are probably not aware of. ويعالجه ويوضح له هذه الخفايا. So then the fact that these things are so subtle and we are not aware of them, it brings the need for an for them to be in the companionship or in the company of an individual who is able to bring these things to light. 
أما أن الإنسان لا يستطيع أن يرى نفسه إلا بمرآة صافية. Just like an individual, he's unable to see what is on his face or body except if he goes and stands in front of a mirror. وكذلك لا يستطيع أن يدرك ويرى عيوب نفسه وأمراضه. Likewise, the same applies to the subtle flaws and um, negative qualities inside. إلا بوجود شخص صادق مخلص عارف أفضل وأحسن منه حالا. And then. Manan. And in order for this individual then to see or to um, be made aware of these negative qualities inside, such as the individual who's, who looked into the mirror and saw um, that which was um, after standing and saw the reflection and saw the mistakes. Likewise, the reflection of these individuals or rather these individuals should stand in front of individuals who are of a higher spiritual level than them who are able then who have um who are able then to spiritually guide this individual and then this individual then who seeks these spiritual doctors after keeping their company and following their counsels will then his flaws or his negative qualities will manifest and um, will be brought to light and through this the rectification process um, would take place and at the point at this point then when the mistakes or when the subtle negative qualities of the heart are brought to light بقوله أو بفعله أو بحاله. Regardless of whether this these subtleties are related to something that you a person said or that that you did or and so forth these subtleties. ولهذا قال عليه الصلاة والسلام المؤمن مرآة المؤمن. And the Prophet Sallallahu in fact alluded to this in the hadith and said that the believer is the mirror for another believer. إذن الطريق العملي الموصل لتزكية النفوس والتحلي بالكمالات الخلقية ومعالجة أمراض القلوب هو الارتباط وصحبة الوارث المحمدي. So all in all then, the practical way for one to spiritually rectify themselves and to adorn themselves with praiseworthy qualities is to keep the company of these individuals who are, who are the prophetic hairs. والمرشد الصادق الذي تزداد بصحبته إيمانا وتقوى وأخلاقا. And this is a guide, a spiritual guide, who through you keeping their company, your state and your traits improve. وتشفى بملازمته وحضور مجالسه من الأمراض القلبية. And by you merely attending their gatherings, rectification of your heart takes place. To the point that your personality and the negative qualities that you that you carry will then be affected by the personality and the positive qual spiritual qualities of that sheikh who you keep um, company of. 
يخطئ كثير من الناس الذين يظنون أنهم يستطيعون أن يعالجوا أنفسهم بأنفسهم ويتخلصوا عيوبها وأمراض قلوبهم دون هذا الشيخ وهذا المرشد الصادق الناصح الوارث المحمدي So after now we've mentioned this which we've mentioned everybody can now appreciate that it is impossible then and it is a mistake a common mistake that some people make where they attempt unsuccessfully attempt to rectify their inner states without the presence or the assistance of a spiritual doctor fa al kitab wa al sunna min hayth al ilaj lil qulub wa al nufus mithl al saydaliyah so let us picture for a second and take the quran and the sunna and we will then imagine that this is a pharmacy فيها جميع الادويه والعلاجات a pharmacy containing many, many medications ولكن كيف تعرف العلاج المناسب لك so how then does a visitor a one who enters this pharmacy know what medication is beneficial for them ونوع ونوع المرض الذي عندك and in fact how do you know then before knowing the medication how do you know what is the degree or what type of sickness do you actually really have فهل ممكن ان تتناول الدواء من تلقاء نفسك So how then will is it possible then for you not knowing the sickness to go about choosing medication بل ربما لو فعلت ذلك كان سببا في هلاكك An individual who does do this and goes into a pharmacy not knowing what type of sickness he has and just um consumes any medication it could be the result of this individual's death la bud lak min tabib istishari arif mutakhassis yubay yashakhis lak al marad thumma yu'tik al ilaj so it's then incumbent upon this individual before entering the pharmacy to approach an experienced doctor who would then assess as to what type of sickness this individual has and then upon this knowledgeable doctor identifying the sickness he would then prescribe medication for this individual وكذلك امراض القلوب والنفوس likewise then for spiritual diseases فلا بد من شيخ عارف فاهم وارث يعرف المرض الذي عندك ثم يعطيك الدواء so just like the individual needs an experienced doctor likewise the person who wants to rid themselves of the spiritual diseases should seek the assistance of a knowledgeable and individual who is a prophetic hair wa hadha kana wadihan fi hayatihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma ashabi and this was something that was very apparent and clear during the times of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his companions fayati ilayhi ahaduhum fayu'tihi نصيحة معينة خاصة به. Where we would find that individuals would approach the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم seeking his advice and then he صلى الله عليه وسلم would give advice to these individuals. آخر ويأتي له آخر ويعطيه كذلك ما يناسبه. 
And likewise, other individuals would approach the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he, he too, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would then give these individuals guidance and advice. Uh, you can to aid هذا سيدي يعني قد يكون الشيء الواحد يعطيه شخص يقول لشخص من الصحابة افعل ويقول لشخص آخر لا تفعل and it may be that one thing that he advises an individual to do upon a second individual coming he would advise them not to do وهذا لأنه صلى الله عليه وسلم يتعامل مع أحوال كل واحد بما يتناسب معه. And this is because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would interact interacted with the people around him, the companions around him, with that which was on their level. مثال ذلك نهى سيدنا عبد الله بن عمر عن سرد الصوم. And an example on, of this is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, informed Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah not to fast repetitively. However, another individual, he, adv uh, he uh, approved of this repetitive fast i.e. daily fast يعني يوميا قصدكم سردا يعني الصوم يعني ايوه دي... يوميا ايوه يعني اسمه, ال... اسمه ذا آه... سرد الصوم يعني يوما يصوم مرحبا واصل سيدي واوصى سيدنا عبد الله بن عمر بقيام الليل فقال نعم الرجل عبد الله لو كان يقوم من الليل and he sallallahu alayhi wasallam advised Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma to pray at night to do the qiyam al-layl and further said that ماذا قال عيد المقالة نعم الرجل عبد الله لو كان يقوم من الليل he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to the closest translation that what a blessed or what a great thing it would be if Abdullah would do Qiyam al-Layl. And he sallallahu alayhi wasallam advised Abu Huraira to pray the witr prayer before sleeping. And more example, And more examples of this is where he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised or um, advised or approved of um, Sayyidina Abu Bakr to um, raise his voice. However, the same the same didn't apply with Sayyidina Umar where he advised him not to raise his voice. All in the context of, of, of what took place that time. The Prophet وسلم, would constantly be assessing and be concerned about the spiritual progress of his companions. And in return, he وسلم, would advise and give them give each individual in accordance to the level which they were on or which they had reached. And anybody who looks into his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will realize this. This was the spiritual nurturing or rearing of the Prophet ﷺ towards his companions. And then 
And then it didn't just stop there, the spiritual nurturing. After the companions, the followers came. And after the followers came, another generation came and so forth and so forth. The spiritual nurturing continues. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of this meaning. You can to fasir al ayah. Bal huwa ayatun bayinat. Ayat wadihat bayinat. Lakin ayna fi sudur il ladina utul il. Fi sudurihim. Ayatanakal mina suduri ila sudur. Where the ayah speaks about signs that are very apparent and these signs are within the hearts of these individuals. And there is certain types of knowledge which is found in books. And there are other types of knowledge which is only found in the hearts and is only transferred from heart to heart or chest to chest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of this in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the ayah that, O oh, you who have believed, fear Allah and be with the truthful ones. And narration, prophetic narrations as well as ayahs from the Quran are many which speak about this topic and because of time we can't go into the details of these. It's upon us then to understand a very important thing at this point. That for sure it's, uh, it's, it's, it's something to do in terms of reading the Quran and doing other outward forms of worship. But we should also know that it's also another thing to embark upon the process of um, spiritual purification. And for this element then of spiritual purification, how many it is of a person who is reciting the Quran, but the Quran is um, يلعنه, هذا حديث. نعم, نعم. Um, how many it is of a person who's reciting the Quran and the Quran is uh, cursing him, which is um, what we'll understand now. So this cursing that we mentioned previously is, is as a result of the person's um, spiritual state which they have where they find themselves spiritually at a spiritual low as well as um, a person who is praying how how many of the people who actually are in prayer but they are not actually in prayer if you want to say spiritually because of their spiritual state <laughs> So just like there's a difference between the, the, the theoretic aspect, the actual science of spiritual nurturing and 
that's different to the actual state of spiritual nurturing. ومن هنا نعرف لزوم المشيخة. And through this, then we should understand the importance of consistently keeping the company of the shuyukh. لا سيما أن الصحابة الكرام عليهم رضوان الله أخذوا من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. And this example we found in those people that came before us and the greatest um, of those from among the greatest of those people are the companions who took from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and kept his company. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kammalahu wa jammalahu wa ja'alahu tahiran al-habbu subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected, beautified, and made the state of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the way it was. أدبني ربي فأحسن تأديبي. And it's mentioned um, a narration where he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, taught me sacred etiquette and his teaching towards me was very high وإن على خلق عظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى mentions in the ayah that verily you are upon good you are upon great conduct ثم جاء التابعون وأخذوا هذه التربية والتزكية والتطهير والتهذيب والعلم من أصحاب رسول الله so this then the, the, these praiseworthy traits that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had who he passed on sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the companions, likewise they passed on to those individuals that came after him, the Tabi'un. Uh, and we would find then that each companions would have a group of people around them who they would take as their students. And an example of this is that Ibn Sirin and Al-A'raj and the other individuals who um, Habib Ahmed mentioned now they were the students of Abu Huraira. Ibn Sirin and Ibn Musayyib and Al-Araj. Ibn Sirin Ibn Sirin and Musayyib and Al-Araj. These are the three people of Abu Huraira. And these, were, these three people were the special students of Abu Huraira. طاؤس ووهب ومجاهد لابن عباس. And these other individuals who he mentioned, these great individuals who he mentioned their names now, يمكن تؤيد الأسماء سيدي؟ سيدنا طاؤس ووهب ومجاهد. These three individuals, great individuals who um, Habib Ahmed mentioned now, they were the students of Ibn Abbas. فأخذوا العلم والتربية والتزكية. So these individuals all took knowledge and also underwent the process of spiritual rearing. And this is all made clear, this meaning which we are speaking about in the hadith of Anas. قال ما نفضنا التراب على أيدينا من دفنه صلى الله عليه وسلم حتى أنكرنا قلوبنا. نعم هذا يمكن تبين التشرح سيدي. يعني سيدنا أنس يحكي أنه ما أتم دفن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إلا وأنكروا أن قلوبهم تغيرت. So during the time in the دفنه صلى الله عليه وسلم. In the Daphne, he said, Bada Daphne, man, man, father, natural, and I can't know Daphne, Nabisa Salama, 
حتى أنكرنا ماذا تغير قلوبنا ماذا تقصد بأنكرنا يعني يعني تحيروا أن قلوبهم تغيرت وذلك بسبب أنه صلى الله عليه وسلم بينهم كان له الأثر القوي في تربيتهم وتزكيتهم وتهذيبهم وتطهيرهم So he mentioned then the hadith of Anas that after they had um, uh, placed the blessed body of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to rest um, that they within inside them there was as if there was a change spiritually. وَالْعُلَمَاء وَرَثَةُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ فِي الْحَالِ وَالْعِلْمِ Sayyidi, هذا هذا معنى الإنكار يمكن تبين أكثر معنى الإنكار أي كان الصحابة سيدنا أنس يحكي تأثير نعم. النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عليهم وعلى قلوبهم So the hadith then Anas رضي الله عنه is making emphasis as to what impact it had um, the demise of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم after they had um, buried him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in terms of how they felt and um, yeah فَرُوْيَتُهُمْ لَهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ لَا تَأْثِيرَ فِي الْقَلْبِ وَمُجَالَسَتِهِ بَلْ وَحَيَاتُهُ بَيْنَهُمْ لَهَا تَأْثِيرَ قَوِي فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Because they were fortunate enough to sit in the company of, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and see him and through them sitting with him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and seeing his his um seeing him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this all had a, a great impact on their very beings so after his demise after the demise of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they had laid his blessed body to rest sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they found then um, a, a kind of emptiness inside. يعني وجدوا فراغ في قلوبهم سيدي. نعم وجدوا فراغ وفرق بين ما كان النبي موجود وغير موجود. القلوب لم تكن مثل أول. طيب واصل. أيوة. ولهذا يدلنا على أنه مجرد قراءة القرآن أو الذكر أو العبادات دون وجود الشيخ المربي ليس له أثر ليس كالأثر الثاني. So from this, let us understand and appreciate that by you just merely reading books um, and just doing your own thing without keeping the companionship of these prophetic hairs. فالصحابة الكرام بمجرد انتقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بينهم وجدوا تغير قلوبهم نعم مع أنهم هم يقومون بالعبادات والطاعات وغير ذلك لكن الارتباط بالحبيب صلى الله عليه وسلم والاتصال به له أثر كبير غير أثر العبادات So it's all well and good to do worship and likewise, the companions continued also to do worship. And, but if the worship is void of companionship with a prophetic hair, then this won't be the same in terms of spiritual progression. ثم ذكرنا التسلسل هذا والعلماء ورثة الأنبياء رضوان الله تعالى عليهم وإن لم يبلغوا مبلغ الأنبياء لكن النور والتربية والتزكية والارتباط لها الأثر So we mentioned then that the scholars of the prophetic hairs and yes they did not reach the rank of prophethood however what they carried what they carry is the blessing and the the nur the prophetic light qala al habib ali habshi rahimahullah man la sahib fi zamanih shaykh arif makin marrat hayatuh wa hu ma'dud fi al muflisin habib ali al habshi made mention that the individual whose life passes without him keeping company of 
a firmly established sheikh, his life passes and he his life passes and he's considered to be from those who will be failures. وقال الامام الحداد ولا بد من شيخ تسير بسيره and imam al haddad radiyallahu anhu mentioned in his poetry that you need to have a sheikh who whose path you follow who you spiritually embark upon upon his path wa qala ibn ashr fi al murshid al muin fi al fiqh al maliki and ibn ashr from um, the school of thought of maliki mentioned مبين ضرورة صحبة الشيخ المرشد وما تنتج عن ذلك من الآثار الطيبة. Explaining the importance of keeping the company of a sheikh and the fruits of such companionship. يصحب شيخا عارف المسالك يقيه في طريقه المهالك. That in the in in a poetic way he said and and i obviously can't repeat the poetry in english that this individual should keep the companionship of a sheikh who is well aware of spiritual wayfaring and then the result of this is that this sheikh will protect him or protect him rather from those obstacles which could be spiritually fatal for this spiritual wayfarer yudhakkiruhu allah idha ra'ahu wa yusil al-abda ila mawlahu further saying in this poetry about the type of sheikh that it should be a sheikh that if you gaze upon him you remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it should be a sheikh that is able to bring you towards the proximity of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ila akhir ma qala fi al-manzuma wa inna ma ikhtasartuha hatta la yatul al-waqt and he mentioned other blessed things in this um poem however because of time we will just suffice with that which we've mentioned faqala abu madyan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu abu madyan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu mentioned man lam ya'khudh al-adab min al-mutaaddibin afsada man yatba'uh that the individual who does not take sacred etiquette from the people of sacred etiquette will corrupt those individuals who choose to follow him and another great individual said if an individual was to gather all of the sciences and keep companionship of different types of people la yablugh mablagh ar-rijal he will not reach the rank of the people of allah illa bir-riyadati min shaykh muaddib nasih except by undergoing the spiritual purification process from a uh, experienced sheikh in this science of purification wa hakadha ra'ayna al ayat al qur'aniya wal ahadith al nabawiya wa kalam al ulama min al a'imma al kiram wa ahli at tasawwuf wa ahli at tarbiya wa ahli at tazkiya yaquluna bi darurati wa ahammiyati al irtibat bi al shuyukh wal akhir anhum and this is why then we have found in the books and we have heard from our teachers and we have heard from um uh, the the scholars of the past and present the importance of 
one's connection and attachment to a sheikh. And this is something which there is no difference of opinion about. لا أريد أن أطيل عليكم لا ذكرت لكم أقوال المحدثين والفقهاء والعلماء وما قالوه بخصوص أهمية وضرورة الأخذ عن الشيخ حتى لا إما الأربعة وجميع العلماء And if time allowed then I would have provided for you some of the sayings from the, peop the, the, the great individuals of the past as well as the imams from the, the, the school of thoughts about the necessity of an individual keeping the companionship of a sheikh. And likewise, we should know that an individual cannot become or cannot be known as a scholar just by directly only, just by so, solely having a relationship with his books in front of him. And likewise, a doctor or an engineer, just by relying on books without any human element in there, will not be able to be um, recognized as a certified doctor or certified engineer solely by books. إذن, so then more importantly than all of that which we've mentioned that the presence of a sheikh is from among the pillars of spiritual wayfaring. So at this point, we will now discuss the different types of shuyukh. هذا الكلام مهم جدا لأن البعض لا يفرق بين الشيوخ. A very important um, topic or um, um, a very important thing that we're going to speak about because many people do not differentiate between from one sheikh to another. فتجده يذهب إلى شيخ ويجعله شيخه في التربية والتزكية وهو ليس أهلا بذلك وإنما هو شيخ علم. And a mistake, a common mistake which happens is that an individual will approach a sheikh and with the hope of being spiritually guided and um, to gain spiritual um, rearing from the sheikh, not knowing that this sheikh is only a sheikh of outward no a sheikh of knowledge and not of spiritual wayfaring so it's important then for us to differentiate between the different types of sheikhs and every sheikh depend every sheikh there is a condition as to a criteria rather for what it makes this sheikh a sheikh. أولاً سأتكلم عما هو موجود أمامكم في هذه الشريحة ثم سأتفرع لأهمية الموضوع. So we will first look at that which is in front of us and thereafter we will go into more details. وقد تكلمت قبل قليل عن ضرورة الشيخ وهو شيخ الرياضة والتهذيب. And we previously spoke about the necessity of having a sheikh and we were speaking about the sheikh of spiritual rearing. Because this is the very point of, this is the very focal point 
of our discussion in these sessions. So we then see that the sheikhs are divided into of three types. من قسم الشيوخ إلى غير هذا التقسيم أو أضاف غير هؤلاء ولكن يعود في الأخير إلى الثلاثة. And it may be that we find that there are individuals who have who have um, divided the شيوخ or categorized them with uh, more than more than three that which we have in front of us. However, it all goes back to the same thing. الشيخ الأول شيخ الإفادة والتدريس أو يسمونه شيخ العلم. The first sheikh, as it appears in front of the screen there, is the sheikh of um, of knowledge. The the sheikh who one benefits and learns. و. شيخ العلم وهو الذي تتلقى عنه علم الشريعة أو آلاتها. Uh, the second sheikh is عائده uh, هذا أمام الشاشة أنت معنا في الشريه. الشيخ الإفادة والتدريس هذا. نعم. و... نعم. الآن الثاني. لا أنا أش... أنا أشرح شيخ الإفادة والتدريس. So let us then take a look at type, type one, the sheikh who benefits, who one benefits and learns from. And this is the type of individuals who you benefit from as far as sacred knowledge is concerned and other tools related to sacred knowledge. مثل أن تدرس الفقه أو أصول الفقه أو اللغة العربية أو غير ذلك من العلوم. Whether it be the sciences of fiqh or the sciences of uh, Arabic and so forth. فهذا شيخ العلم كل من عنده أهلية وأخذ العلم وله سند فيه. So as for these shuyukh that we are referring to of knowledge, it's those who are qualified to do what they are doing and who carry with them a chain of transmission. ومتمكن في العلم فهذا يمكن أن تأخذ العلم عنه. So if we do find then that they fit this criteria in terms of their chain of transmission and um, the knowledge, then it then you, then one can benefit from such people. وذكروا بعد ذلك شروطا لهذا. العالم الذي يؤخذ عنه العلم. And after this, some conditions have been mentioned. شروط حول هذا سيدي الأول. نعم شيخ العلم شيخ الإفادة والتدريس. So as for this type one, um, there are conditions or a criteria that should be fulfilled for the sheikh to be considered in this criteria. من أهم تلك الشروط السند. And the import, the most important of such conditions is that this sheikh has a chain of transmission. أي أنه أخذ هذا العلم عن شيوخ قبله. Which means that he took from other individuals before him, other teachers before him. وهكذا متصل الإسناد إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم والأئمة. Taking from other people who took from other people leading back to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. وذكروا كلاما حول هذا الشيخ من حيث التمكن في العلم. من ذكروا سيدي؟ العلماء. 
العلماء ذكروا شروطا و أمورا لا بد أن تتوفر في هذا العالم من حيث التمكن في العلم فعنده تذهب إلى إليه وتأخذ العلم منه. Uh, fortunately enough, we have within our rich tradition um, uh, the criteria is clear as to who are these sheikhs that one can take knowledge from, which is knowledge which is um, the criteria is available. So we will, um, he will then send it to us just to save time. And we will, um, at a later stage, um, after it's translated, inshallah, forward it um, to those individuals. الشيخ الثاني شيخ الرياضة والتهذيب. So the second type of sheikh is the sheikh of refinement and um, uh, it shouldn't be uh, self-discipline. Yes, the sheikh of refinement and self-discipline. وهو شيخ التربية. Which is also known as the Sheikh of Spiritual Rearing. And this is the type of Sheikh who you learn from him the sacred etiquette which is needed to embark upon the path of proximity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having etiquette with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. يقول شيخنا الحبيب عمر Our teacher Habib Umar mentions في بيان شيخ التربية as to the criteria to the sheikh of spiritual nurturing as to who he is المسمى بشيخ التهذيب كذلك which is also known as the sheikh of um, who won the Sheikh responsible for the process of pu spiritual purification. Sheikh Al-Tahdeeb Al-Ladhi Yanza' Minka Sifat al So the definition of such a Sheikh is this Sheikh is the one who removes from you blameworthy traits. وَيُخَلِّصُكَ مِنْ شَرِّهَا And renders you free from these ill traits and distances you from these traits and purifies you from these ill traits and Adorns you with praiseworthy traits. وهذا له كذلك شروط سنذكرها إن شاء الله تعالى. And all of these, to these, this type two, there's also conditions which we will mention إن شاء الله. لهذا أجيب المؤذن. مرحبا. الله أكبر. الله أكبر. الله أكبر. و تسمى بشيو... بشروط شيخ التربية. And uh, ماذا يسمى؟ شروط شيخ التربية. As for the conditions then of the sheikh of spiritual refinement. ولا بد لشيخ التح... التربية من أمور يحتاج إليها. And there's a certain criteria that the Sheikh of Spiritual re Refinement should fulfill. ثم الثالث شيخ الفتح وسيأتي معنا إن شاء الله تعالى في شرائح التي بعدها الشروط الشيخ. 
And thereafter, the category number three is the Sheikh of Fatih. Sheikh al Fatihi. Hada Sheikh al Fatihi, Aladi Yurabi al Murid, Bihusni Nadare, Wijamili Riayate. He is the Sheikh Aid Hadi Libara Sadi. Aladi Yurabi al Murid, Bihusni Rinayate, Wasadidi Nadare. And he is the Sheikh who spiritually raised the disciple through his gaze and his special care upon him. فإذن, so we then find that the Sheikh of three types. Sheikh الذي تتلقى عنه العلم. A Sheikh which you seek knowledge from. A Sheikh الذي تتلقى عنه التربية والتزكية والتهذيب. Number two, a sheikh which you seek spiritual purification from and spiritual rearing and refinement. And the third type is the sheikh upon whom your opening is granted. As for type one, he is he um it's it, it's an individual who is known ويعلمه طالب العلم ويذهب اليه ان تحققت فيه الشروط such that the student of knowledge recognizes and knows who the sheikh of knowledge is and approaches him to or her to go seek knowledge from them وكذلك شيخ التربيه والتهذيب يكون معروف لدى المريد والشيخ يعرف مريده إن توفرت كذلك فيه الشروط. And likewise the sheikh the, the, the second type of sheikh who is the sheikh of refinement and spiritual rearing he is an individual who is known to his disciples or to other people who then approach him to seek out to seek their spiritual refinement and nurturing. As for type three, the Sheikh of opening, it's different such that it may be that the disciple knows the Sheikh, and it may be that he is unaware of who his Sheikh of opening is. وقد يعلم به أو لا يعلم به. أعيد سيدي. وقد يعلم به أو لا يعلم به هذا المريد شيخ الفتح. المريد يعلم أو الشيخ يعلم. الشيخ المريد المريد قد يعلم هذا الشيخ وقد لا يعلمه. Um, so as we said previously, it may be that this individual knows who his sheikh of opening is, this disciple. And it may be perhaps that he doesn't know or he or she is not aware of who their spiritual, uh, their sheikh of opening is. فشيخ الفتح اختيار الرباني ليس للشيخ اختيار وليس للمريد اختيار. As for this type three, it's a special, um, it's a special bestowment or um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon this, the, uh, the disciple, the spiritual wayfarer, not from the spiritual wayfarer's choice, nor from the sheikh of the opening's choice. And this sheikh of the opening then, is the one that will spiritually nurture and refine this disciple, whether or not the disciple is aware of who he is. And it may be that this disciple only comes to know of who the sheikh of, of of his or her opening was after the opening actually takes place. 
قال شيخنا الحبيب عمر حبيب عمر mentions أما شيخ الفتح as for the sheikh of the opening فهو الذي بسببه يخرجك الله تبارك وتعالى it is the individual who by, because of him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes you from or takes you away from عن حصر وقصر العالم الحسي from the limited um, physical realm والظاهري and material إلى عالم الملكوت عالم الملكوت يعني عالم الغيب to an angelic realm or to a high a, a spiritually high realm فتنفتح بصيرة قلبك and at this point the eye of your heart opens up فتشاهد من عجائب الله وأسمائه وصفاته وجلاله وكبريائه and what you then witness with the eye of your heart is the signs of Allah and the great amazing the great amazing elements related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation مَا لَا تُشَاهِدُهُ الْعِيُونِ sites which only the eyes of the heart see and not the physical eyes وتخرج عن العالم الذي يدرك بالحواس الخمس and you exit then the realm which is which is um through the five senses through the senses which involves the five senses the physical realm in short وقد يكون شيخ التعليم هو شيخ الرياضه والتهذيب هو شيخ الفتح and it may be that these three different types of sheikhs are all found in one person وهذا الكامل and when and if this is the case where all three types are found in one individual. This is the excellent or the perfect shape. وقد يكون شيخ الرياضة والتربية هو شيخ الفتح وقد لا يكون هو. So it may be that the sheikh who is spiritually nurturing you, as it's um, on point two in the PowerPoint presentations, it may be that he is. He, or, he is the sheikh of your opening, or it may be that he is not the sheikh of the opening. فقد يرتبط المريد بشيخ التربية والتزكية والتطهير، لكن يكون فتحه على شيخ آخر. As it may be that an individual attaches himself to the sheikh of refinement and spiritual nurturing. However, his opening takes place from another sheikh other than that who was spiritually nurturing him. وقد يكون فتحك على نفس الشيخ وهو شيخ التهذيب والتربية. And in some cases, it may be that this sheikh in number two is the same sheikh in the, the same type of sheikh for number three. ولهذا المريد لا يلتفت إلى شيخ الفتح لأنه ليس له إرادة ولا اختيار فيه وإنما هو اختيار الله. So as we previously mentioned then that the disciple does not have a choice as to who his sheikh of opening is. And for this reason of not having a choice, one should not look left and right in search of the sheikh of, of opening. قصدكم لا يلتفت لاني لا يبحث يعني لا يبحث لا يبحث لانه قد لا يشعر لا يدري به لا يعرفه الله هو يختار له قد يكون هو اصلا 
لا لا تعرفه هو ولا تلتقي به مرحبا واصل سيدي ولهذا يتعلق المريد بشيخ التربية فهو يهذبه ويطهره ويزكيه ويبعد عنه الصفات المذمومة ويحليه بالصفات الحميدة فإذا أراد الله سبحانه أن يفتح عليه يفتح له كما أراد الله وشاءه الحق سبحانه وتعالى So it's upon them the disciple to be pay, um, to hold fast to um, the sheikh of refinement and the sheikh that is undergoing his or her spiritual rearing until the time comes for the opening to take place through the sheikh of the opening. مثل ذلك ما وقع إلى للعلامة الحبيب العارف بالله علي بن عبد الله السقاف. And a, a similar story which took place to the Gnostic um, Al Habib Ali bin Abdullah Al Saqaf, which the which Habib Ahmed will now narrate. فإنه ارتبط بالحبيب علي بن عبد الله العيدروس. That such that his connection, he was attached to Habib Abdullah, Habib Ali bin Abdullah Al Aydrus. في الهند. In India. فسافر إليه من حضر موت. And so because of this attachment, he went then, he journeyed towards him, um, Habib Ali bin Abdullah Al Aydrus. He went towards Habib Ali, who was in India. ساكن في الهند يعني. نعم. فسافر الحبيب علي بن عبد الله السقاف سافر إلى الهند وارتبط بالحبيب علي بن عبد الله العيدروس. So Habib Ali bin Abdullah Saqaf, being attached to his sheikh who was in India, Habib Ali bin Abdullah Aydrus went to him. Wa. كان يربيه ويهذبه وكان له شيخ التربية. And he was responsible for his spiritual nurturing and spiritual refining. ثم بعد ذلك رجع وارتبط بالإمام الحداد. And thereafter he came back. Habib Ali bin Abdullah Saqaf came back and attached himself to Imam Al Haddad. وكان فتحه على يد الإمام الحداد. Who then was his sheikh of his opening. ولهذا قال له الإمام الحداد. And for this reason, Imam Al-Haddad mentioned to Habib Ali bin Abdullah Al-Saqaf. نعم. Al-Habib Abdullah Al-Haddad قال للحبيب Ali bin Abdullah Al-Saqaf. نعم. قال له. إن تربية علي بن عبد الله العيدروس لك في الهند كلها تهيئة لي. وإمام الحداد mentioned to him that your spiritual refinement and spiritual the process of spiritual purification which you are undergoing under Habib Ali bin عبد الله العيدروس in India. Was all but a preparation for me for the opening. Wa al fatihu min indi. And the opening, I am the one responsible for your opening. Wa kull al tarbiya wa al tazkiya lati akhta min al habib Ali bin Abdullah al Aydarus hiya tuhiyuk limada wa wa turtibuk li al fatih ala aydina. So all that you took place in terms of spiritual nurturing was all of this was a preparation for you to come and receive the opening from me. فكان فتح الحبيب علي بن عبد الله السقاف على يد الحبيب عبد الله الحداد. And it so happened then that the opening of Habib Ali bin Abdullah السقاف took place at the hands of Imam al-Haddad. ولهذا قد يكون الإنسان يرتبط بشيخ من شيوخ التربية والتزكية 
فيقوم بتهذيبه وتطهيره وتربيته ليهيئه للفتح على يد شيخ اخر وذلك اختيار الله واراده الله So this is just then to mention we mentioned the story just so everybody can know and realize that it may be that an individual is undergoing spiritual refinement and spiritual nurturing from a particular sheikh and all of this could be an introduction for them to receive the opening from a sheikh other than this sheikh who is spiritually refining him or her فالمريد حينئذ يقصد الله سبحانه وتعالى والوصول اليه للفتح So it's upon then the disciple who is unaware as we mentioned of who his sheikh of opening is to turn his attention towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يتوجه اليه ويطلب منه الفتح سيدي لا يتوجه الى الله يريد الوصول الى الله لا يريد الفتح يريد الله عز وجل It's upon this disciple then whilst undergoing the spiritual refinement process and not knowing as we've mentioned of who the sheikh of the opening is that he should he or she, his or her focus should be solely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not look left and right for who the sheikh of the opening is well fatihu يجري كما يريده الله سبحانه وتعالى على اي كيفيه وعلى اي هيئه وفي اي زمان وفي اي مكان وعلى يد من اي شيخ هو اراده الله as the opening takes place however whenever and by whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills ولهذا ذكروا عن يوسف بن عابد المغربي and For this reason, another story is mentioned about Yusuf ibn Abid al-Maghribi. كان في المغرب من أهل العلم ولكنه كان يبحث عن شيخ ليربيه ويهذبه ويفتح الله على يديه. This individual was in Morocco in search of a sheikh to spiritually refine him and for him to undergo the process of spiritual purification ومن صدقه مع الله سبحانه وتعالى راى رؤيا and from his sincerity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he saw a dream اطلعه فيها على شيخه a dream in which therein he saw who his sheikh was kama sayati ma'na insha Allah al kalam an kayfa ya'rif al murid shaykhahu as we will mention soon as to how does the disciple recognize or know who his or her sheikh is fa dhahaba yabhath an shaykhin بهذه الصفات التي راها في منامه وكان يتنقل من مكان الى مكان ومن بلد الى بلد وكلما سمع عن شيخ للتربيه ذهب اليه so after seeing this dream as to who the sheikh was in terms of uh, his qualities and the, the the description that he saw in the dream he then um, began searching from place to place as to in with the hopes of finding this sheikh who he had seen in his dream وكل شيخ يقول له انا لست بشيخك and he would approach many sheikhs and he would approach sheikhs who would then tell him that i am not your sheikh for spiritual refinement حتى وصل الى الحرمين الشريفين until he reached ماذا تقصد ب لست لست شيخ فتحك اي لست شيخ فتح كل شيخ يراه يقول انا لست شيخ لست شيخ فتحك so all the sheikhs that he was looking um, 
in search for, with the hopes of finding this sheikh, he, they would tell him that we are not your sheikhs of the opening. Yani fil manam ra'a ru'ya an sheikh fatih. Naam. It's a sheikh tarbiyati. Naam. فكان يبحث عن هذا الشيخ الذي رآه شيخ الفتح وليس شيخ التربية شيخ الفتح so he was then in search then for the sheikh the sheikh of the opening who he had seen in his dream حتى وصل إلى الحرمين الشريفين until he reached ماذا تقصد بالحرمين مكه ومدينة سيد نعم until he reached uh, wait, Mecca or Medina, Habib? Mecca or Medina, you talk about the Until he reached um, the two sacred um, precincts, Mecca and Medina. فذهب يبحث عن الشيوخ لعله أن يلتقي بهذا الذي رأى. And continued his search in in these blessed in these holy places for with the hopes of finding. The Sheikh of the opening who he who he had seen in his dream. And it so happened that he met somebody. Who told him then that as for this Sheikh of the opening who you are in search of, he is not here. لعله أن يكون في حضرموت في بلد تسمى عينات. It may be that this sheikh who you are searching for is in حضرموت in a place called إينات. وكان في ذلك الوقت موجود الشيخ أبو بكر بن سالم. And this was the time in which the great individual um, lived. الشيخ أبو بكر بن سالم. هو شيخ فتح وتربية وعلم ومعرفة كبيرة. أعيد هذه الإبارة سيدي. الشيخ أبو بكر بن سالم كان شيخ قطب كبير عالم وعارف بالله. And this شيخ أبو بكر بن سالم was a Gnostic and a true, a, a great person of Allah, a spiritual pole. فذهب إلى حضرموت. So then this individual, um, Sheikh Yusuf, went to Hadramaut. وسأل عن عينات. And inquired about the about the whereabouts of the place of Inat. حتى وكان وسأل عن الشيخ البكر بن سالم. And asked about Sheikh Abu Bakr bin Salim. حتى جاء إليه. And finally met him. فأول ما رآه الشيخ أبو بكر بن سالم. So the very moment that Sheikh Abu Bakr bin Salim set his gaze upon Sheikh upon um, Sheikh Yusuf. قال له تأخرت علينا يا يوسف. He said to him that. You have, oh, you, you have delayed coming to us, oh Yusuf. I used to spur, get, offer you spiritual rearing while you were from the very time that you were in, in the womb of your mother. وحكى له وحكى له كل الذي جرى له منذ أن تحرك إلى أن وصل وماذا حصل وماذا فعل. And thereafter, Sheikh Abu Bakr bin Salim began narrating to Sheikh Yusuf everything that he had experienced during his travels and his search for for him. فارتبط به ولازمه. ففتح الله عز وجل عليه ببركة الشيخ بكر بن سالم. So the connection took place and the opening took place at the hands of Sheikh Abu Bakr bin Salim. هذا هو ثلاثة أنواع الشيوخ. And these are the three different types of shuyukh. 
ويكون حينئذ دخل علينا الوقت وتأخرنا هذه الليلة كثيرا عليكم and unfortunately time has caught up with us and uh, we have um, probably delayed some of you نطلب منكم العفو والمسامحة we ask your forgiveness ونحن كذلك بعد قليل سنذهب إلى درس آخر and unfortunately we have to excuse ourselves as we have another lesson to attend to وبقي هناك كلام ومواضيع تتعلق بالشيوخ and there so there still remains topics related to the the sheikh منها شروط الشيخ from amongst that the criteria of what makes a sheikh a sheikh الرابطه بالشيخ the connection and attachment with the sheikh كيف يعرف المريد شيخه how to can how does the disciple recognize or know who his or her sheikh is وكيف تنتفع بهذا الشيخ في حال وجوده وفي حال غيبته and what are the means of deriving benefit from your sheikh whether his physically present with you or not in yassar allah azza wa jalla lana liqaat ukhra nuwasil hadhihi almawadi if it may if if it if allah wills for us to be able to continue um these topics in the near future then we will do so ijma'u al-asila allati ladaykum ثم إن شاء الله نحدد وقتا آخر للإجابة على الأسئلة وتكملة هذه المواضيع المهمة. So Habib Ahmed is just requesting for everybody to gather their questions and we will arrange a lesson specifically to attend to all these questions. ولو كان الكلام بالعربي فقط لكنا قد انتهينا قبل نصف ساعة وأكثر. يا خير هذا هذا مدح لنا او ذم سيدي هذا مدح لكم انكم شاركتمونا خير حبيب uh, is saying that um, if the session was held in arabic alone then we would have finished long time ago i.e. i caused the delay was it فحين اذن نحن نفرح ان نكون اختلطت اللغات وكان الموضوع واحد and we are happy that the languages were different however the subject was one نلتقي ان شاء الله على خير ونواصل وتكون ان شاء الله بدايات لدورات اخرى في مواضيع مهمه جدا علميه وسلوكيه ودعويه we hope then to meet inshallah in the near future where we will discuss and look at more beneficial topics وباذن الله سنحاول نضبط الوقت and in the near in the future inshallah when we meet again we'll try be more organized in terms of the time ونطلب منكم العفو والمسامحه والدعاء and we're requesting from everybody um dua and forgiveness نتوجه الى الله سبحانه وتعالى في خاتمه هذا المجلس we turn towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of this session wa naqulu ya hayyu ya qayyum ya dhal jalali wal ikram ya dhal mawahid wal idham ya dhal qawli wal iqbal ya karim ya mutaal akrimna wa akrim hawla al hadirin bi haqaiq al irtibaq wa haqaiq al ittisal wa haqaiq al mahabba wa haqaiq al irada hatta nakuna ya maulana muridina haqiqa mustamsikina bil urwa al wathiqa ashriq fi qulubna anwar al tariqa wal shari'a اللهم اجعلنا واياهم دلالات هدى وارشاد وبلاغ ونيابه ووراثه عن حبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعن وراثه واهل خلافته والنيابه عنه اللهم جازي كل الجزاء من سعى في اقامه هذه الدوره ومن قدم ومن خدم كل من حضر يا مولانا اعمر القلوب بالنور وابعد عنا وعنهم كل الشرور واجعلنا واياهم من اهل الحبور والسرور وفائضات الخيور يا بر يا غفور اغفر ذنوبنا واستر عيوبنا 
واجمعنا على الخير واجعلنا وياه من اهل الخير واجعلنا متحابين متاخين انشر بنا انوار الهدى وانوار الاسلام وانوار الايمان وانوار الاحسان واجعلنا وياهم من دا دا في دوائر اهل العرفان يا حنان ويا منان اللهم نظره من نظراتك نفح من نفحاتك عطيه من عطياتك خلع من خلعك التي تخلعها على المحبين وعلى المتقين وعلى المتوجهين وعلى الصادقين وعلى المخلصين يا حي يا قيوم ارفعنا إلى ذلك المقام الرافع أشرك في قلوبنا حقائق الاتباع للنبي الشافع اللهم إنا اجتمعنا مع هؤلاء الأحباب مع هؤلاء الإخوان لتقويم السلوك وتقويم السير اجعلنا يا مولانا أهل حقيقة في ذا في السلوك وحقيقة في السير وحقيقة في التربية والتزكية اللهم ابعد عنا كل قاطع وكل مانع واكشف الحجاب وشرفنا بكشف النقاب عن سمير حضرة قاب في مقام الاقتراب ارخنا عليك من هذا الباب يا كريم يا وهاب اللهم ابعد عنا يا مولانا العلائق والعوائق والالتفاتات والاكدار والاغيار حتى لا يكون في قلوبنا الا انت ولا نتوجه الا اليك ولا نعتمد الا عليك ولا ننطرح الا بين يديك اللهم حقنا بحقائق الارتباط وحقائق التقوى وحقائق يا مولانا لاتباع حبي المصطفى في الأقوال والأفعال والأحوال اللهم إنا نسألك يا مولانا أن ترخن حصتك الحصين وحرزك المكين وكهفك الكنين اللهم خذ بقلوبنا إليك أخذ أهد الفضل والكرم عليك اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها فزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم إنا عجزنا عن صلاح أنفسنا وتهذيبها وعجزنا عن طهارة قلوبنا وتنظيفها ولكن بك يا مولانا تتنظف القلوب وبنظرة من نظراتك تتهدب النفوس اللهم ارفعنا يا مولانا بما رفعت به أهل الإرادة اللهم أعط كل واحد منا مرادة اللهم يا حي يا قيوم افتع علينا فتوح العارفين اجعلنا من أهل العلم وأهل العلم والحلم وأهل الأخلاق وأهل الأذواق وأهل الأشواق اللهم انشر في كل بلد وفي كل مكان أنوار لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله اجعل في هذه البلدان التي حضر بها فيها هؤلاء الإخوان أنوار لا إله إلا الله ترفرف في كل مكان وفي كل زمان وشرفنا يا مولانا بخدمتها والقيام بنصرتها وفدائها بك بالمهج والأرواح وبكل ما نملك يا مولانا فإن نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ما من بيت شجر ولا حجر ولا مدر ولا وبر إلا سيصله ديني بعز عزيز أو بذل ذليل اجعلنا ممن تعز بهم هذا الدين ويكونون من أنصاره ويكون من خواص الذين تجري على أياديهم النفع يا حي يا قيوم اللهم أهلنا لذلك اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واستر لنا عيوبنا واكشف لنا كروبنا واربطنا بمحبوبنا اربطنا بحبيبك محمد في الغيب وفي الشهادة وفي الظاهر وفي الباطن وفي الحس والمعنى حتى تسري فينا أنواره وتسري فينا أخلاقه فنتخلق بأخلاقه ونتأدب بآدابه ونت... ونت... ون... ونت... وإذا نشرنا الإسلام ننشره على هذه الوسطية وعلى هذه الرحمة المحمدية اللهم يا مولانا اكشف لنا من تلك المخبآت والكنوز اللهم افتح لنا أبوابك واجعلنا من جملة أحبابك يا مولانا اجعل ساعة قبول اللهم اجعل ساعة وصول اللهم اجعل ساعة تفتح فيها القفول اللهم زكي لنا بها العقول يدخلنا في دوائر الرجال الفحول اللهم وما كان منا من سيئات وزلات ومعاصي وخطيئات وما جرى منا مما يغضبك ويسخطك ويغضب حبيبك محمد 
صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم إنا نتوب منها اللهم إنا ندم من فعلها اللهم إنا نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ونؤوب إليك ونرجع إلى حضرتك العلية اللهم اجعل ساعة توبة ساعة أوبة ساعة الصلح بيننا وبين حضرتك يا حي يا قيوم أنت الغني عنا أنت أنت المتفرد بعليائك وكمالك اللهم نحن فقراؤك نحن ضعفاؤك نحن المساكين من عبادك اللهم وفقنا يا حي يا قيوم لكل خير اللهم يا من وفق أهل الخير للخير وأعانهم عليه وفقنا يا مولانا للخير وأعنا عليه اللهم اجعل هؤلاء الأحباب وهؤلاء الإخوان قرة عين لنبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وممن يدخلون السرور على قلبه الشريف حقهم بحقائق الاتباع والاقتداء وأفض عليهم فائضات الاصطفاء وجنبهم يا مولانا مواطن الزيغ والرداء اللهم يا مولانا احفظ شيوخنا واحفظ ائمتنا وزقنا كمان الادب معهم وحسن التلقي والاخذ من حضراتهم اللهم انها موائد فضل وانك انت اهل العطاء الجزل وموائد الخير مبسوطه تمدها لمن شئت من عبادك امط لنا في ليلتنا هذه وفي مجلسنا هذا من صماط رحمتك ومن صماط نظرتك ومن صماط نفحتك ما يسعد به الواحد منا سعادة لا يشقى بها بعدها أبدا وتجري تلك السعادات في البيوت على الأولاد والبنات والزوجات والأصدقاء والقرائب والأقرباء وكل من نجالسهم وكل من نتكلم معهم تسري فينا وبنا أنوار الهداية المحمدية وأنوار الهداية الأحمدية وأنوار الهداية المصطفوية فإنه الهادي وأن أنت الهادي يا هادي اهدنا بهداية نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واجعلنا هداة مهتدين صالحين مصلحين يا حي يا قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام حقينا بحقائق الذكر وحقائق الفكر وحقائق الشكر وحقائق الصبر والزهد والرضا والورع والتوبة يا حي يا قيوم ارفعنا لأعلى مراتب اليقين علم اليقين وعين اليقين وحق اليقين بوئنا في أعلى مراتب التمكين يا رب العالمين استجب الدعاء ولا تخيب الرجاء وقفنا وأحبابنا هؤلاء على بابك ولازمنا أعتابك ولذنا بسيدي أحبابك فافتح الباب افتح الباب وسهل الأسباب وذلل الصعاب واسقنا من أحلى شراب حتى لا نخرج مع هؤلاء من هذا المجلس إلا وقد كتبتنا في دواوين أوليائك وكتبتنا في دواوين أحبابك وكتبتنا في دواوين أهل نصرتك يا حي يا قيوم أنت المرتجى يا حي يا قيوم لا منجا ولا منجا منك إليك وحالاتنا وحالات أحبابنا وأمة محمد لا تخفى عليك اللهم اجعلها يا مولانا ساعة من أبرك الساعات واجعله مجلس من أبرك المجالس يذكر في الملأ الأعلى بما تذكر به مجالس الصادقين بما تذكر به ما تذكر به مجالس الصالحين فإنك يا مولانا تذكر في الملأ الأعلى من قربتهم إلى حضرتك ومن أدنيتهم إلى شريف قربك وتباهم به ملائكتك واجعل هذا المجلس معروض على حبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عرض المحبة عرض الوداد عرض الفرحة عرض السرور يا مولانا وتسر لنا من سرايات محبته وسرايات فرحته وسرايات وده إلى قلوبنا فنمتلئ بك وبه وإلى أرواحنا فنتعشقك ونتعشقه حتى لا يكون في هذا العالم ولا في هذا الوجود ولا في هذا الكون أحب إلينا منك ومنه صلى الله عليه وسلم نرزق يا مولانا في الدنيا بموافقته ونسعد يا مولانا في الآخرة بمرافقته ومعيته اللهم يا مولانا اجزي خير الجزاء هؤلاء الأحباب هؤلاء الإخوان هؤلاء الحضور ومن له يا مولانا حاجة في نفسه ومن له حاجة في أهله وفي بلده أسألك أن تجعل الحاجات مقضية وأن تجعل المطالب شريفة عليا 
اللهم اجعلنا من اهل الدرجات البهيه السنيه اللهم ان لنا طمع ولنا رجاء بك الا تصرفنا الا وكتبتنا في اعلى مراتب اهل النصره واعلى مراتب اهل القربه حاشاك ان تخيب من رجاك وان ترد من دعاك انت الذي امرتنا بالسؤال وانت الذي وعدتنا الاجابه فقمنا يا مولانا على امتثال لاقامه سبب العبوديه وسبب يا مولانا ما امرتنا به اللهم ابهج هذه الارواح اللهم نسم على هذه القلوب اجعل قلوبنا وقلوبهم محلا لسرك ومحلا لمعرفتك ومحلا لنظرتك ونفحتك اللهم اجعل قلوب سليمة مسلولة سخيمة تودع فيها من أسرار المعرفة بك وتودع فيها أرواحنا من أسرار محبتك وتودع في سرائرنا من أنوار مشاهدتك حتى يا مولانا نكون متحققين بحقائق العبودية متحقين بحقائق يا مولانا أنت ربنا رضينا بالله ربا وبالإسلام ديننا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيا ورسولا سر اسرار الفاتحه والى حضره النبي. اواكم الله حفظكم الله رعاكم الله ايدكم الله نستودعكم الله الذي لا تضيع ودائعه وعلى لقاء قريب ان شاء الله تعالى. بارك الله فيكم سيدي في امانه الله. في امان الله. Alhamdulillah, we thank everybody for having attended. And um, uh, in short, um, just to summarize the dua that Habib made, um, he asked that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards everybody who attended, everybody who facilitated, and that as he's united us upon these platforms to unite us also in the hereafter. And that through these this gathering be a means of all spiritual obstacles um, falling away from our path and that we increase in taqwa increase in spiritual refinement elevation and that we achieve that which we want to achieve through our through that which we intended and that we are able to implement the knowledge that was um, mentioned and then he made a dua for everybody um in the from their respective um countries that they be a means of light spreading in their localities and spreading all over and then uh, he concluded the duas um, with making um duas for the teachers um his teachers and then asking that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, forgives us for our sins and um, this is just a very um uh, so this is just the summary um i'm sure i didn't catch majority of it but inshallah if only one of those um, um duas are accepted then it would suffice us in this life and the hereafter and um just a reminder to those individuals who uh, maybe didn't catch um the, the who couldn't keep up with the dua because it was in arabic remember that um habib ahmed is making dua for us so um, it's not a condition for us to it would be nice of course but it's not a condition for us to understand what's being said for acceptance to take place and um, so inshallah um, when we do attend gatherings in the near future where people might be making duas that we don't understand if we are able to get the dua um, translated great but if not then um, don't deprive yourself of saying amin allahumma amin we thank everybody for having um taken out time out of their busy schedules to um be with us yet again and we hope inshallah um, in the near future to um continue this session with um Habib um, Ahmed, and inshallah, stay posted. Um, we will be having other lessons, inshallah, with um, uh, other teachers. And um, the admin has posted um, for anybody that wants to um, be kept up to date with the upcoming um, lessons, inshallah, they can just um, connect through us through um, any of those um, social media platforms. And 
that's all from my side. Um, apologies for those people who had um, questions that weren't answered. Like Habib said, we will make um, a, a, a special lesson just to um, tackle those questions, inshallah. And feel free to um, also reach out to us if anybody has got um, suggestions or complaints or compliments even, inshallah. Um, keep us in your du'as as we continue to keep you in our du'as, inshallah. Uh, before we exit, um, is there anything else from your side, Admin? The Admin has said, no, thank you. Khair. Keep us all in your du'as. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.